Peace and blessings in this corner box of 24. Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? I'm doing pretty good. God is good, God is great. Can't really complain. And, um, you know, we're here for another day. You know, we got another day to be here. And we're grateful, I'm grateful, you know. Another day above ground, right? So I want to talk about Cora Stevenson, right? And uh, I want to talk about Bob Aram, his promoter, who uh, made some comments yesterday that I kind of agree with, but then I'm going to give a little spin on it, what, you know, how he could make things better, okay? So we know Cora Stevenson is now... He had the WBL belt. He got that from Jamel Herron. He beat Jamel Herron. And now, on Saturday, this past Saturday, he beat Oscar Valdez for the WBC 130-pound championship, right? So there's two belts left out there. There's the IBF and the WBA. The WBA belt is owned by, or the fighter that had the WBA BA belt is Roger Gutierrez from he's, he's Venezuela. He's 26 and 3, one, 26, 3 and 1 with 20 KOs. And then you got Kenichi Ogawa from Japan, who's 26 and 1. 26, 1 and 1 with 18 KOs, right? So Shakur Stevenson can fight both of them and become undisputed at 130. And I was saying that, you know, he should just do that since he's at 130. Uh, give him more activity, you know what I'm saying, for the rest of the year. I feel like, you know, he's young. You could fight one person. One of the fighters, either Gutierrez or um, Ogawa, you can fight either one, however you do it. Fight one in July, fight one in December. That would be three fights this year. Take a little break for May, June, July, you know. Take some time off in May. Get back in the gym for June and July, you can fight them. Then you take a little break in August, September, October. November, and December, you could fight the next fighter and you could be undisputed at 130, right? But Bob Aram is saying, because nobody knows Gutierrez and nobody knows Ogawa, which he has a point. Nobody does really, I mean, nobody really knows them unless you're really in the box like that. You don't know them guys, even though they got belts, right? Which also goes to show that belts don't mean too much, okay? always remember belts it's not about belts it's about legacy okay and it's about who you fight because floyd was never undisputed remember that floyd money mayweather pretty boy floyd was never an undisputed champion in no division okay so always remember that it's not about the belts so i agree with bob aram to a degree right but the thing is what I got a problem with is that your job as a promoter, which you didn't do with Terrence Crawford, and you're doing the same thing with Shakur Stevenson now, is, and Shakur Stevenson, you know, is a bubbly type of fighter. He has a great personality. He's a talker. You know, he talks his stuff, but he backs it up. He's out there. He gives interviews. You know what I mean? He's more vocal. He's more outgoing, more than Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford is becoming that now. You know what I'm saying? And that's a good thing. But Shakur is already that. So he don't need much. So Bob Abner, your job as, as the promoter for top rank in your team is to promote him even more because he's doing his part. Now you promote him even more and then you make those fights more appealing to the fans. Mike Tyson, no matter who he fought, people knew Mike Tyson. 
and they came to see Mike Tyson and supported him, whether it was in attendance or pay-per-view. Mike Tyson, even when he fought Peter McNeely, Peter McNeely was nobody. He still has one of the highest grosser numbers of pay-per-view when he fought Peter McNeely. Why? Because it was Mike Tyson. It didn't matter who the opponent was. That's how Shakur Stevenson, that's how Terrence Corbett, that's how these fighters are supposed to be. Whoever you are fighting, you're supposed to be able to bring the numbers. Same thing Tank is doing. Tank is doing that. It don't matter who he fight. He's bringing the numbers. The, the Barclay Center is probably going to be pretty much sold out, if not sold out, fighting Wally Romero. Everybody don't know Wally Romero, okay? But just because of Tank, because people know Tank and they like Tank. That's how it's supposed to be with Shakur Stevenson. So that's the part I disagree with, with Bob Aaron. You're supposed to build your fighter up that everybody knows him to the point that no matter who he's fighting, they want to see Shakur. They want to see him win, right? Why shouldn't he be undisputed? The belts are there. I'm not saying that if he doesn't become undisputed, that it's going break to his, break his rhythm or break his day, right? No, no, sir, because he's a, he's, a, he's a champion, and he's a master boxer, so he's going to be good regardless. But if that's the goal that he has in mind, that's what he wants to do. If he wants to do what Canelo has done at 168, and he wants to do what very few fighters have done, then why not let him do that? Okay? So, only other option is he moves to 135. Now, he could fight Robson Carnesio. I'm pronouncing his name wrong. I really can't pronounce his name like that. But the same fighter who fought Oscar Valdez and gave him a hard time where he had the controversy with the green tea. Robson uh, Carnesio, I think he's from Brazil. Okay? He could fight him, Shakur Stevenson, because he was a tough fight for um, a lot of people think he won that fight with Valdez. So he could fight him, all right? That's all I could really, I mean, he definitely could fight him. That wouldn't be a bad fight. But if he wants to be undisputed, he needs to fight Ogawa, and he needs to fight Gutierrez, okay? But if that's not going to happen, then you got to move up to 135, okay? Devin Haney's getting ready to fight Cam Bosa's twice. In Australia, so June, and the next fight hopefully will be before the year's out. So then next year, you know, that may be an option next year, maybe. Okay, Tank is fighting May 28th. That may be an option if you go to 135, Shakur, this year or next year. I don't, I, you know, I don't know what your plans is. I don't know what the plans are, but I'm just saying. I just have a problem with Bob Arum. Saying that, I mean, I get what he's saying about them not knowing those fighters. He's right about that. I'm not disagreeing with that part. I'm disagreeing with it. What I'm saying is build your fighter up that no matter who he's fighting, that people want to come and see Shakur and they will support him. Like me, I will support him no matter who he's fighting because I want to see what he's going to do. And always remember, this is boxing, right? At the end of the day, nobody's invincible and all it takes is one shot that could end a fighter's career or that could get you to win. Okay? Floyd Mayweather, again, is an example of that. The great Floyd Mayweather. If he wasn't able to hold on when Shane Mosley hit him with that shot, man, that would have been history in the making. That would have been one of the greatest upsets, or probably, if probably not the greatest upset in the history of boxing. But he held on. He got his composure, and he won that fight. So I'm just saying, we could look at Gutierrez, we could look at Ogawa and say, oh, they don't really got a shot with Stevenson. But it only takes one shot. Okay, you just never know. So it's 50-50, man. Should he take those fights? Should he move up to 135? That's something that they're going to have to work out. All right? But I just know when it comes to Bob Aaron, same way he didn't promote Terrence Crawford the right way, he's not going to do it with Shakur. If he didn't do it with him, who's on the pound-for-pound pound list as the number one fighter over Canelo, or maybe one, two, reverse, however y'all want to do it, right? If he didn't do that with him, why would he do that with Shakur? And I keep saying, and I'll say it again, the only reason Shakur got that fight with Valdez is because Terrence Crawford was leaving, had left, and he filed a lawsuit against Bob Aaron. So he had that heat on him, and Shakur was asking for that Valdez fight. He was saying he was ducking him, and so the pressure was on to Bob Aaron said, yo, the least I could do is make this fight for Shakur. But uh, other than that, because remember, he was trying to have... Shakur 
he was trying to have Shakur fight Gutierrez. You know what I mean? And Valdez was going to fight Conoseo. So that's how that was going to go. Or if I'm not mistaken, maybe uh, he was going to fight Gutierrez. It was, it was one or the other. I just know that. What I do know is uh, Valdez was not going to fight Shakur. Okay? Valdez was going to fight either Gutierrez or Conoseo. He wasn't going to fight Shakur. That's the fight that was getting ready to be made. And Shakur was just going to have to wait. But once that pressure was on and everything that happens with, with Terrence Crawford and Shakur calling out Valdez and saying, you got to stop ducking and putting that pressure, then he said, you know what? I ain't got no choice but to make this fight. He was put under pressure to make that fight with Valdez. Right? And now he's talking about, oh, Shakur did a great job. It was a masterpiece. It was this, it was that. Yeah, it was. But it shouldn't have been no question about that. He should have got the fight anyway. Because he just beat Jamel Heron. And that was a great performance. All right? So that's all I really got. I just wanted to, you know, talk about that. And, um, you know, tomorrow, maybe later we'll be on here with something else. Okay? Peace and blessings in this corner box from 24. Please leave your comments, your yays or your nays. Um, please subscribe to the page. Help us grow. I'm trying to do good content. Um, content. If you don't agree with what I'm saying or anything I say, just let me know. I deal with, I do research. I deal with facts. Okay? Doesn't mean I know everything. I could be off about a fight or a fighter or, or a certain detail. Like I'm, 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 I did lose my memory a little bit off of who Valdez was supposed to fight, whether it was Gutierrez or Conoseo. It was, it, it was, well, he fought Conoseo, but I think, like I said, Shakur wanted that fight and he was setting him up to fight somebody else. It was either Gutierrez or Conoseo and then Valdez was going to have his fight. Okay, so that, that was a discrepancy right there. And I just can't remember all the details. But it will come back to me. And if I remember it, I'll come back on and talk about it, okay? So peace and blessings in this corner box from 24. Everyone enjoy the rest of your evening. Be safe out there. And God is good all the time. Peace.